more sad about the way she died rather than that she died. One year after the winter storm, many Texas families are still grieving. More than 240 people lost their lives across the state. People living at dozens of nursing homes and assisted living facilities had to evacuate. Investigator Avery Travis has been digging into what's changed to keep the lights on for these vulnerable Texans and what still needs to be done. Last year, state lawmakers considered requiring nursing homes and assisted living facilities to have a generator on site in case of emergencies, but that effort failed, largely because this isn't practical or even feasible for many smaller homes across the state. What they landed on instead was a survey to find out what kinds of backup power are needed. But months later, we're learning hundreds of homes have yet to submit their answers to the state. I'm wearing her necklace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we pass it around. <laughs> Four sisters sharing jewelry, just like when they were kids. But it's not the same. We dream about her a lot. One of the sisters, Cindy, lived in an assisted living facility in North Austin. But during last February's winter storm... We just assumed Cindy would be okay, you mm -hmm. know. She was in a place where she was being taken care of. We should have worried about it. Cindy's home had a generator, but the sisters only later learned it served just part of the facility. According to a state investigation report, the facility did not have a generator for the assisted living side of the building, and residents were left in their rooms in freezing temperatures. The document states staff did not follow their emergency plan or have enough food, water, or proper training to handle the crisis. On top of that, Cindy's window had been left open. Her death certificate says she died of hypothermia. These tragic, complicated stories are part of why Representative Ed Thompson shifted his efforts from trying to require generators to instead asking if long-term care facilities have a backup power source, what kind, and how it fared during the storm. We'll be able to get a, a better idea of, of exactly what's going on. Despite a due date in November, the Texas Health and Human Services Commission says it can't share any results because it's still accepting responses and waiting on many. Yeah, it's disappointing. The announcement went out and I think it just got a little bit lost in the shuffle. Carmen Tilton with the Texas Assisted Living Association says homes have been focused on protecting residents from the spread of COVID-19. She's glad to hear HHSC is following up with facilities that haven't responded. HHSC also told us it's launched a more formal outreach effort this month. And then use that knowledge to say, okay, where does that kind of requirement make sense? But Representative Thompson says they need those results to get started. I'm a small business owner and I understand the ramifications of cost, you know, when, when somebody comes in to require you to do something. But by the same token, I, I think it's incumbent upon us to protect uh, these elderly folks that are in these facilities. Avery Travis for State of Texas. Thanks, Avery. Thompson says he plans to amend the bill next legislative session to better consider size and types of facilities. He also said U.S. Senators with the Special Commission on Aging have reached out to his office as they evaluate a potential generator requirement on the federal level. By comparison, Florida passed a law requiring backup generation in long-term care facilities in 2018 after some residents died in the sweltering heat during Hurricane Irma. All nursing homes and large assisted living facilities there must have 72 hours worth of fuel for their generators on site. The law requires small assisted living facilities to have 48 hours worth of fuel. The congressman, the engineer, and the newcomer. How different perspectives are shaping the race for one of the state's new congressional seats. And a new poll gives new insight into the campaign for governor, why the popularity of the president, or lack thereof, could be the key factor deciding this race.